Hello, amazing ladies of Happily Ever After Bootcamp. How are you doing? I'm excited to be here with such an amazing group of women. Mireille Nicole here with another training. Now, this one gives me mixed feelings a little bit. I talked in the last video about how some of these trainings, you know, they, they feel different for me to share, right? But I am so excited about this, this work here that we're doing and the result, what is possible from doing this work. Today, we're going to talk about letting go, which is kind of the other part of the healing from within work that we started in the last one. And I actually debated what I should call this training because I could have also called it designing your new identity. And it's such a more positive <laughs> spin on the topic, right? Compared to letting go, but I think letting go catches more of you in your current state. It might resonate more. And where we get you to is this new identity. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, but let me preface this again, that I am not a trained psychologist. I'm not a licensed therapist. If you've been through any of the three A's in your relationship, so abuse, addiction, adultery, you might want to explore those other avenues. If you haven't already, that's a bit of a different different level. But having said that, there's going to be huge value, no matter what you've been through in doing this work in this training today. Because if you're having a hard time letting go, chances are a big reason is because you have nothing new to grasp onto. And that's we're going to talk what we're going to talk about today. So doesn't matter what happened to you, right? No matter what it is that's causing you to hang on. Maybe you've been cheated on in the past. Maybe you've been dumped without ever knowing why. Maybe you've been lied to. You've never felt cherished. You are taken for granted. You are being taken for granted in your current relationship or something happened with your husband and your man and you guys struggle, you just can't seem to shake it off, right? And it's having an impact in your bond, in how you communicate together, whatever it may be, right? You're carrying this with you, with the man, whether you're dating him or in the relationship. And it prevents you from being truly yourself because you want to shield yourself a little bit, right? You want to prevent any further pain from getting to you. So it might be preventing you from saying what's truly on your mind or sharing what you truly need or desire to be fulfilled in your relationship. Maybe it prevents you from leaving a situation that's not right for you. I could go on and on, but I'm going to stop here and say, first and foremost, I get it, right? I've been there. And I'll share a bit more about my personal experience with this a bit later in the video. But first, I wanted to share one of my famous Buddhist stories about this. And I can just, if my husband could hear this, he'd be like rolling his eyes right now with my, my little stories. But these Buddhist stories actually mean a lot to me because growing up, um, I was raised being shared a lot of these Buddhist stories. So I'm like, it's got extra meaning for me. It's got extra power. So I trust that it's also going to land with you. And I'll share some of my own stories stories. But first, so the story goes, so this particular story goes, there's a senior monk and a junior monk, and they were traveling together in the forest somewhere in nature. And at one point, they come to a river with a strong current that they needed to cross. And as they were preparing to cross the river, they saw a very young, very beautiful woman also trying to cross the river. And the young woman asked, like, if they could help her cross to the other side. And the two monks glanced at each other and, like, they had taken a vow never to touch a woman. But then, without saying a word, the older monk picked up the woman, carried her across the river, put her down on the other side, and just carried on with his journey. And the younger monk, he, he couldn't believe what just happened, right? He was speechless, and he caught up to the older monk, and hours went by where, you know, they weren't talking. It was kind of awkward. And finally, the younger monk said, you know, how could you, how could you carry that woman across the river? As monks, we took an oath, you know, not to touch a woman ever. And the older monk looked at the junior monk, the younger monk, and said, brother, I, I put her down on the side of the river a long time ago. Why are you still carrying her, right? Think about that for a second. This is such a powerful example of letting go and how we carry things in our mind, right? The younger monk was very concerned about what it meant for the senior monk and what it meant about him to carry her across the river. And, you know, the, the older monk didn't make it mean a thing about him. 
right? That's another aspect too. What are you carrying and what are you making a story around? He simply carried on. Of course, there's no trauma here, so it's a little bit different. Maybe it's not the perfect example, but think of it like in your own life, in your own relationship, what are you carrying on your shoulders? What is it that you're carrying with you current and maybe in the past, right? What are you making those situations, those stories mean about you? Now, again, I'm not suggesting here that you completely ignored what happened to you or you, you know, you minimize it again. And I'm not going to suggest that you slap some fake positivity on it either, right? But I am going to propose that you slap some possibility on it. And that's the work that we're going to do today to help you let go. Because what you really need to let go, like I alluded to earlier, is something new to hang on to. Otherwise, and another example, another story. I'd like to share and this kind of ages me maybe maybe if you've watched this as, as a kid too is um Bugs Bunny right if, I don't know if you've ever watched the that cartoon growing up but you know I picture Bugs Bunny getting chased by the coyote and running away and then falling off a cliff like I don't know if this actually happened but I just picture this happening in Bugs Bunny for whatever reason and he falls off the cliff and he's like holding on to this branch on the edge of the cliff and he does not let go for dear life, right? He is just hanging on there. And that's what's going to happen, right? You're never going to let go if you don't feel safe in doing so, if there's nothing there to catch you, no hand for you to grasp. And this might sound contradictory, actually, to what I've said in the other trainings. And I don't mean that you need someone external to come save you, right? Something, someone outside of yourself or for someone to extend their hand, right? You're holding onto that proverbial branch I'm talking about. Um, but it does mean that you need to provide yourself or you have the opportunity, the possibility, I should say, I should use those words, to grasp onto something new. And this reminds me of another story, actually, all these letting go stories I have. Eh? When I was a kid, I was going, maybe some of you ski here. If you downhill ski, I was going skiing as a little kid and I was in the chairlift. And for whatever reason, I was holding onto the pole in a really weird way where the pole was like all twisted between the, the metal bars and it when it was time to come off the chairlift I was stuck and it just so happened to this that the ski hill where we were at it just so happened that where you got off was kind of like on a hill so I wasn't able to get off and then I was crossing over the hill and I was just hanging there. And I remember they, they stopped the chairlift. They noticed right away that I was like stuck on it. And I remember someone saying um, people had like gathered around. I was just like, I don't know, maybe I was eight or something. And I just heard someone say, let go. All right. And I let go. And I smacked my knee right into my face. I, I, I didn't hurt myself seriously. I had maybe just a little cut on top of my nose. But um, again, right, I had nothing else to hang on to. I had all these good intentions of someone saying, oh, just let go, you know. But at the end of the day, right, I remember I'm the one hanging on. I need something, right? Okay, cool. So what do I do now? I need something to hang on to. Adapt that that story as you as you see fit. But like I said, it's a lot easier to let go when you have something new to hold on to. And now what I want to invite you to explore is that this letting go or this new thing to grasp onto is going to be the new identity that you design for yourself. And I'm saying new, but it doesn't have to be a new you necessarily. It can just mean reconnecting to um, or rediscovering who you are. A lot of times in relationships, right, we lose who we are, the sense of who we were. And for those of you who are really into like the woo-woo spiritual awakening stuff, right, the famous Eckhart Tolle, I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, he says, as long as you make an identity for yourself out of pain, you cannot be free of it, right? In other words, what if there's another way to look at the past? Like, what if there's another identity of you to shift to? What if that's what's missing for you to let go of that pain in the past? Again, we're not overwriting it. We're not dismissing it. But what if there's another identity that we can take on that still honors the hurt and the pain that we've experienced, that you've experienced, but without having such an impact on your current or future relationship? What would that look like? The biggest identity shift for myself came during my relationship with my current husband. And things were just getting so tense. And I had always been like this super strong, independent woman growing up in, in life and in my love life. But I was being, I have to say, a wimpy girlfriend. <laughs> 
with my my current husband when we were dating when things were really tense right I was just our relationship was spiraling out of control and I didn't know who I was being and I remember once a couple of my girlfriends were like hey we should go on a weekend getaway of some sort and I flat out said I couldn't do it and that the reason was that I just wanted to be home with my man because my relationship felt so fragile if I thought I even went away for a couple of days that it would completely fall apart and one day through doing this work I decided I was no I was being that damsel in distress right like and I decided I was no longer going to be her right I wasn't going to be waiting for my man to change I wasn't about to give up either on this relationship I was starting to gain more awareness of my role in my relationship and I was going to stop thinking you know what maybe I wasn't meant for this, or maybe there's someone better out there. I was going to figure out what it looked like to be the heroine of my love story. And I started to embody that. And I have to say, that's when things started shifting drastically in my relationship. All right. If you have any questions, as usual, leave them in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.